physical states. Um, the smallest aldehydes are gases, the medium-sized ones are liquids, and if you get above about 11 carbons, then you get solids. And again, I am not at all hung up on, do you know that a C3 would be a liquid as opposed to a gas? These are just generalizations. And I think generally we should understand that as it gets larger, the boiling point goes up. So as it increases, the smallest ones are gases, and as they get bigger, they'll be liquids, and then they'll be solids. The smaller ketones are going to be colorless liquids. The larger ones then would be solids. So the boiling and melting points for aldehydes and ketones are going to be between alcohols and alkanes. They're going to be higher than alkanes because they have these dipole-dipole attractions between the carbonyl groups. So here's the carbonyl group on one aldehyde or ketone, and here's one on the other. There's no hydrogen, bond, hydrogen bonding going on because there's no hydrogen on this oxygen. The alcohols have hydrogen bonding, and that's why their boiling points are higher. The aldehydes and ketones are in the middle because the alkanes only have the London forces, the induced dipoles. The alcohols have hydrogen bonding. These guys are in the middle. They've got dipole-dipole forces. So they've got medium strength intermolecular forces, and so they're going to have medium bo boiling points. Here's just a comparison. Um, I don't know, let's just look at the ones on the bottom here. So molecular mass being about the same. Here we have an alkane, an aldehyde, and an alcohol. And their boiling points vary significantly. Butane is a gas at room temperature. Its boiling point is minus one degree Celsius. So that's pretty cold for a boiling point. Um, propanol has a boiling point of 49 degrees and propanol at 97 degrees Celsius. So propanol boils just before water does. I'm wondering what this 8 is for. You see that? Boiling point, 8 degrees Celsius. What? Yeah, that's in the book too. I think that's a typo. I see stuff like that, and I can't help it. Okay, there. That's better. Solubility. Um, like the ethers, the aldehydes and ketones can hydrogen bond with water. They can't hydrogen bond with themselves, but they can with water. So here's illustrations of that. Here's an aldehyde. We've got the carbon with the hydrogen here. This oxygen can hydrogen bond with water molecules. So that increases the solubility of these compounds in water. And here's a ketone hydrogen bonding with water molecules. So the smaller aldehydes and ketones are very useful in that they're soluble in organic solvents, and they're also soluble in water. And that's what makes acetone a good treatment for water in your gasoline. Because the water will dissolve in the acetone, the acetone will dissolve in the gasoline, and everything mixes very nicely. As the number of carbon atoms increases, the solubility goes down. So here if we look at number of carbon atoms, and these are aldehydes and ketones, um, methanol and ethanol are infinitely soluble in water, meaning they're completely miscible. Um, propanol, the solubility in water is starting to go down, um, and as the number of carbons increases, the solubility goes down. Now, these guys here in the middle, um, we say they're slightly soluble. If you had to choose soluble or insoluble, I'd, I'd put slightly soluble in with the insoluble part, because this is one, this number one here means one gram in a hundred grams. So 1%, that's pretty small. So over here with the ketones, again, the smallest one is infinitely soluble, and then the solubility in water goes down as the number of carbons increases. And that's because the number of carbons increasing, you're increasing that alkane chain, and that's like an alkane. It's nonpolar. 
And so the solubility in water, you've got to balance that carbonyl group and its ability to hydrogen bond with the water against the alkane group and its inability to interact with water. As it gets bigger and bigger, it plays a more important part.